Well, the debate with Nader Ahmed um, got over with a few hours ago. I'm back in my hotel room, and I'm having to talk a little bit quietly because I don't want to wake the people next door up. But anyway, um, one of the most amazing debates I've ever been involved in. Uh, on any level, Mr. Ahmed would have been disqualified in a formal debate um, more times than I think he said the word and. Um, his behavior was the worst of anyone I've, I've ever debated, including uh, Robertson Genis in the 1999 mass debate. Um, but at the same time, that's not overly surprising. I uh, expected some of that. I just did not realize how low he would stoop. Uh, but again, as it is late, uh, I just wanted to provide a uh, brief clip of part of the cross-examination period. Uh, I asked a brother to use my little teeny camera, so obviously it's not exactly professional quality, but the sound came out real well. It's amazing what a little camera that big um, will do. But anyway, um, there's a four-minute clip of two questions that I asked uh, Mr. Ahmed, and it really did summarize the kind of utter non-performance that he presented. Um, he, he had a 20-minute opening statement. He used seven minutes of it. Uh, again, most of and, and the Muslims in the audience were very displeased. Uh, those who came forward and spoke were very displeased with his, uh, with his behavior and his presentation. So uh, at the very least, we can hope that some pressure will be put upon him to find another line of work because, quite honestly, that's what he needs to do. But uh, So very, very quickly, here is a four-minute clip from the cross-examination portion of the debate this evening at Old Dominion University. It was supposed to be on whether we could trust the New Testament. It ended up being an entire discussion of the Apostle Paul uh, and a number of other things that he dragged in that had nothing to do with the debate at all. It truly was an amazing thing. But let's let's listen. In. This over here. Um, you have been talking. You made reference in your presentation to first-century books uh, outside of the New Testament. Could you please name one and give some scholars to back up your dating uh, that uh, we should have in our New Testament? When we talk about these books, first of all, and I'm glad you raised that you're presenting the New Testament that it was all written within the first century. This is not true. Every scripture, every the manuscripts which the New Testament is based on, this is all based on manuscripts which date back 250 to 300 years after Jesus. Okay? All of the manuscripts with the, with the exception of a, of a credit card sized document. But I told you the whole argument is so silly to begin with because people can be just as big of frauds and liars. 50 years after Jesus, as well as 150 years after Jesus. So, if you want to say the Bible is written 50 years after Jesus, okay, no problem. But actually, when we look at the infancy Gospels, when we look at these other books, we don't know when they were authored. We have no idea. Right around 150, 200 years after Jesus is when they first appeared on the radar screen. But that doesn't mean that they originated at this time, but once again, you know, if you want, and people believed in these myths, people believed in like the Gospel of uh, Peter, okay, which you today reject as a false scripture, the, the Christian community of Rosas, and, and so when you start rejecting Gospels, and you say these books are frauds, I know the Gospel of Peter claims to have been written by Peter, but the author is a liar, he's a charlatan, and then I bring you another Gospel, the Gospel of Judas, and then I show you the Ebionite Church, the Ebionite Church to have claim to have apostolic authority based on Peter and James, but you say they're all liars, they're all frauds. All right, you know, I'm not saying that you are. So in the midst of all these lies and these frauds comes the New Testament. So all we are saying tonight is that the New Testament is simply a product of its environment. And the fact that he could not show any evidence to the contrary, I think that's clear. Yes, we have time for one, one more. more. Mr. Ackman, you did not answer my last question. I'm going to try it one more time. You made direct reference in your positive speech to books that were written in the first century. Please identify them and give a single scholar, give a single scholarly reference, sir, that substantiates your placement of these in the first century. No scholars for you today, because as soon as I name a scholar, oh, he's a liberal scholar, and then I don't want to get into this whole issue, okay, this scholar said this, this scholar said that, bring forth the evidence, give us the proof for what you're saying. So, 
I, again, I answered your question. I'll answer for a second time. When these books were written, we don't know. Okay, we don't have enough evidence. We don't even have a, a clear picture of even the first century, right? Don't you agree we don't have a clear picture of what happened in the first century? Well, let me, let me jog your memory. According to Matthew chapter 25, verse, uh, chapter 27, verse 52, when Jesus died or was crucified, zombies came out of their graves and these dead bodies were walking all around in Jerusalem and the pagans, the Jews, the Gentiles, all saw these, all saw these you know, dead bodies which came to life like zombies. Where is the historical evidence for this? Today, if you look inside Christian history, you won't find a single reference for this. And out of embarrassment, your own scholars reject this. Well, he came very close. He was like, you know, kind of embarrassed about that. William Lane Craig wouldn't accept this passage. So you see, you're asking me about the first century. So I will say, I don't know when these books are written. But since you're worried about the first century, I challenge you to show me one single historical reference about the zombies which are walking after Jesus was uh, died that were walking around in Jerusalem and you'll never find any. So this is a refutation of his so-called attacks on the Gnostics, Valentinus, and those other Gospels because he said there's ridiculous teachings in those books. Well, I'm almost done. Um, chapter, Matthew chapter 27 verse 52 isn't very bright either. So by your own criteria, you're dismissing the books. And remember, I said all the New Testament is written 250 to 300 years after Jesus, with the exception of a credit card size. All right, well, that was uh, kind of a...